Well, we've got smartphones, smart cars, and now with the Cirrus 2020 model year, we've got smart airplanes. That's because Cirrus has got some interesting technology built in called Cirrus IQ. And using cellular technology, it's a way for Cirrus to monitor these airplanes, including how pilots are flying them. Let's strap into that new Cirrus and talk to Cliff Allen. So Cliff, you and I have done this before. Aviation Consumer has been covering the Cirrus SR uh, Piston Series airplane since the beginning. And uh, incrementally, we've been climbing into these airplanes as Cirrus makes uh, both major and minor changes. It's a model year 2020 flagship SR22T turbocharged airplane. Absolutely, Larry. The, 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 there's a lot of new features in the 2020 airplane, but what really has changed is we've really connected the airplane to an app on your phone. We call it Cirrus IQ. And what's going on is that the, the G1000, the Perspective Plus, has always collected a lot of data, and it's stored it on a, on a data card here, but then it's bringing that data to Garmin Pilot. But now we've taken that a step further where when the airplane lands, it sends all that data to the cloud, where Cirrus can then track it and monitor to make sure our fleet is operating as we've planned. Uh, the information is reported back through, a, through an app to the pilot. So you can, when you land, you can sit, look at the app, you'll see what your fuel levels are, what your TKS levels are, what the temperatures are for the airplane. And there's nobody that, that doesn't fuel their own airplane, that hasn't shown up at the FBO, ordered up a top off and then went home, only to come back to the airport to find out that the airplane didn't get topped off and you're behind schedule. But with this app, you can be sitting at home, 10 o'clock at night, you can ask the airplane for a refresh, the, it'll automatically turn on the avionics in the airplane, it'll send a new data pack up to the cloud, back to the app, so you can see if your, your airplane got refueled. But more importantly, we're going to be able to start looking at trend data on all of the components on the airplane, and hopefully be able to start predicting failures. Or if, there, if for example, you have an alternator 1 failure, you land, the airplane will report back to Duluth that your airplane just had an alternator one failure. At some point in the future, we'll be able to prompt a warranty claim, the shipping of a new alternator to your service center immediately. So we'll be able to, to really stay ahead of maintenance on the airplane. And using this mega data to be able to look at the trend, we hopefully will be able to begin to predict failure on components that aren't meeting their useful life. And that all that information will all come through Cirrus IQ. Now, Cirrus has done some pretty advanced things with the NXI as well that are unique to this airplane. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. When you think about the G1000, it was originally launched by Garmin in 2005, and the hardware never really changed. So the you really had a 2005 computer in the airplane up until 2017 when Garmin came up with the NXI, which was all new hardware, LED backlight screens, a lot more processing capability, a lot more power, and we started to really be able to take the G1000, the Perspective Plus, to the next level. And the way I've become to think of NX, the Perspective Plus is it's my co-pilot now. You think about the way a two-crew airplane flies. You have a pilot flying and a pilot monitoring. If I'm the pilot flying, the, the Perspective Plus has become the pilot monitoring. It's looking over your shoulder, it's, it's uh, computing descent rates for you. If you try and take off with no flaps or full flaps, it'll warn you. The 2020 model, if you get more than a, a, a three-quarter deflection on either the glide slope or the localizer, the airplane warns you. So just like your, your co-pilot would be looking over your shoulder or your double eye would be coaching you down an ILS, the airplane is monitoring to make sure that you are flying within a stabilized approach. One of the new features with the uh, Perspective Plus this year is you can see the heading bug. When I start turning the heading bug, the bug overlays on the compass arc on the multi-function display. And it gives us our trend vector. So we're gonna do a 360 degree turn over Block Island and we'll start heading back in shore. But you can see the heading bug just carrying right across. So this flagship SR-22T is turbocharged, and the sweet spot is really at high altitude. 
It's a winter day here in Connecticut, uh, and uh, we just departed from Wyndham Airport in uh, Connecticut. We're in cruise flight at 9,500 feet. Pretty fast trip up to 9,500 from uh, takeoff out of Wyndham. What kind of performance can we expect down low and up high? We're cruising along here at 9,500 feet. It took us about seven minutes to climb at a cruise climb speed of 100, uh, 120 knots. We're chewing out at 180 knots. We're flying lean to peak, burning about 19 gallons an hour right now. So the uh, the uh, airplane, at a, it's about what we'd expect at 10,000 feet to be about 180 knots. At flight level 180, we're going to be breaking 200 knots, and we'll get the full speed of the airplane at 215 knots at 25,000 feet. But uh, what are we what are we looking at as far as useful load, fuel capacity, and we've got four people on board today. We have four people on the airplane right now. We took off with about 50 gallons, if I recall, and we were about 150 uh, pounds below max gross weight. So the uh, part of the Perspective Plus is that we do actually have a weight balance calculator built right into the, the, mu the multi-function display. When we fill that in and we confirm it, it records our weight balance on the flight data recorder. So we have, we've done what is required of us in Part 91 flying in that we have done a, a weight balance before we, uh, we departed. You know, we talked about uh, how these airplanes looked when we first started covering back in, uh, what, 1990? 99. 1999, Tiras was all white. And when you taxied up on the ramp, one thing I was that struck me was how different these airplanes are from an aesthetic standpoint. The paint schemes are uh, really vibrant, really interesting, and uh, really, really high quality. Yeah, we've got some really fun new colors this year. The airplane we're flying today is Bimini Blue, uh, just a lovely uh, light uh, summer color blue. We also have some new colors with uh, uh, Aurora Purple and Volt, which is a really electric yellow color. So there, there's uh, some really new bright colors that we've also continued. Athens Blue and Monarch Blue and Sedona Red, some of the more toned down colors too. Also new designs on the interior too. Really a comfortable place to be. These airplanes are made for long distance travel and uh, Cirrus has done a pretty good job of making it a comfortable dwelling. One of the things that we really started to look at, and this is going back now seven, eight years, is really thinking about the non-pilot that was going to be in the airplane. So we started looking at high-end sedans and luxury cars so that somebody getting into the airplane that maybe has never been in a small airplane before is going to feel they're in a familiar surrounding. So we, we really do look at the uh, at really what's the automotive industry doing to make really comfortable interiors and, and try and follow their lead. And uh, speaking of, of the automotive industry, this airplane has got some safety enhancements in the interior. We've got airbags, uh, airbag seat belts. That's right, exactly. Mm -hmm. We're sitting on 26 G seats. That's part of the parachute recovery system. The uh, and of course we still have the, the cap system. So Cliff, uh, thinking more about uh, Cirrus IQ, I can't help to think about the interaction between the Garmin Pilot app and the, uh, and the G1000 avionics in the airplane. It's watching everything you're doing, it's recording what you're doing. Um, where do you see this going from a, from a pilot training standpoint? Well, if you look at already where it is, especially when you think how Garmin Pilot interfaces with the Perspective Plus. So if we have Garmin Pilot on while we're flying, the airplane is reporting all of that flight data back to the Garmin Pilot. So if you and I are out on a training flight and we go back to the, uh, to the flight school and we sit down, we can open up our Fly Garmin account and it will recreate that flight in our flight Garmin account. So we can talk about how are our altitudes, how did we do on the, uh, on the ILS that we were practicing. And now if you take that to the next step with Cirrus IQ, all that information is going back to Cirrus through, our, through the cloud network. There's a, there's a time where if you are landing too fast, let's say you're coming in, you're not stabilizing your approaches, the airplane is going to rat you out and it is going to maybe send an email to your CSIP saying, hey, Larry needs some help in the traffic pattern. He's landing his airplane too fast. Or the, if you're regularly too high or on, on the glide slope or, or not holding the localizer, the airplane will be coaching you down. And if there's really an issue, it can even 
report it back to your CSIP saying, hey, call up Larry, get together with him because he needs some work on his, you know, his IFR proficiency. What do you think the typical uh, Cirrus owner is going to think about sort of big brother watching I want to be safe? And Cirrus has put a huge emphasis over the past few years on training. It's all about training, and I think this is a, sort of the next step. Well, you know, that, and that's really the way that we hope that everybody would look at it. This is not going back to a regulator. It's being used for us to be able to make Cirrus owners and Cirrus pilots safer. And to, uh, if, we can, uh, if we can reduce the number of runway loss of control, boy, that's good for everybody because we're not going to have banged up airplanes, uh, we're going to have lower insurance rates, and we're going to have better pilots. So uh, hopefully that everybody will embrace this as a way for them to get better. Uh, that, that to be training, every flight becomes a training flight for them. And with any luck, there may be a, a insurance advantage in a insurance market that's pretty hard right about now. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Now, I think Cirrus IQ Tech is more impressive for what it might do in the future than what it does now. Data logging for trend analysis is sort of old hat at this point, but it's useful and the prospective avionics already do it. Cirrus service centers dump the captured data when the airplane hits the shop floor for maintenance, and so does the FAA if the airplane ever hits the dirt. But Cirrus IQ reports the data in real time with a direct cellular cloud link to Cirrus support. If the company can keep tabs on the data for tighter tech support, I think it could make for a better ownership experience. That means better dispatch reliability and a good way to predict component failures. As for how you feel about Big Brother watching your stick rudder and button pushing skills, the idea could be an insurance advantage, particularly on a million dollar piston single. Now Cirrus IQ is standard in all new Cirrus models, including the Vision Jet for 2020, and Cirrus said at this point it's not retrofitable on existing models. Now you could look for a full report on a 2020 model SR22T in the upcoming June 2020 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. For Aviation Consumer, I'm Larry Anglosano. Thanks for watching.